head, didn't you? And you don't seem to mind sending her children away. And if Carly doesn't wake up, I'm going after those children myself. With almost three decades as Bobby Spencer on General Hospital under her belt, Jackie Zeman has become a household name. She started her career in entertainment as a dancer in New York. But Jackie quickly embarked on a journey to fulfill her childhood dream of starring in a soap opera. She pursued her acting career with vigor and determination, and it wasn't long before Jackie was on her way in Hollywood. Thanks for taking this time with me. I appreciate it. Well, thank you for inviting me. I've been looking forward to this. What was your first big break in the soaps? My first audition was for um, Ryan's Hope, which was on the air at the time, um, and it was very popular. And I read for the producer in his office. It wasn't even a test. It was a just a cold reading for the producer. And when I was crying my eyes out and doing a monologue in a scene, and the phone rang. And he answered the phone in the middle of my monologue. <laughs> I was like, oh, no. In the, in the <laughs> I'll never get Big emotional <laughs> moment. <laughs> so I got out on the street, and this was before cell phones. You know, I hit the yeah. phone booth, and I called my agent. I said, well, that one's not going to happen because I was in the middle of my big scene. And, and it, the phone rang. He answered, and she said, actually, they just called. You got the part. He answered because he didn't wow. need to hear anymore. They were offering you the role. And I was just so happy and so flattered. And then ironically, two days later, I was offered also, a con uh, as well, a contract uh, to work on One Life to Live. Um, so One Life to Live. So I ended up on One Life to Live. Three years. How did you get to, uh, to your other show? Well, I was getting killed. I remember going on One Life to Live for what was supposed to be like a six month, a short term deal. They, they, and they, Doris Quinlan, who was absolutely wonderful, was the executive producer in those days. And she took me aside because she knew I was very young and I had no experience, you know, very limited experience in the business. I'd done a couple of, you know, extra jobs. And uh, she said, we're bringing you on. We're giving you a contract. It's a three year contract just because that's what ABC does. But I want you to know now, within six months, you're going to be killed off. And I'm going to tell you that now because, one, I trust you won't repeat it. But two, I don't want you to feel when I have to call you back in here in four or five or six months and tell you it's your last day that it's anything that you've done wrong. It's just that's how it will you're work. Just going to be the killed three year off. doesn't really mean it's three years. It's I mean, just did, what the did, network did does. Did you ask? How am I going to be killed off? <laughs> no, at the time, I just, I didn't even, you know, I heard it, and I appreciated that she was being, uh, the kindness, yeah. I mean, how many no, producers, you as a, you know, how many producers would do that? Yeah. They wouldn't take the time, there is no time. But I thought it was very, I, now even I realize the kindness of that. But it, I remember then she called me back in six months later, and she said, remember that conversation when I called you in and said six months, and I said it wouldn't have anything to do with you. She said, well, apparently it does. We've gotten a lot of mail, and there's been a positive reaction to your character. And so we're going to extend. We're no longer killing you off. And you're on the show, and I just wanted you to know we have you for three years, and we're, you're going oh. to be working. <laughs> and oh. I was thrilled and so grateful. So then um, General Hospital came along. Then General Hospital. I worked with Jam Jameson Parker, who was mm -hmm. my on One Life to Live, who I worked with, who was fabulous. And oh gosh, Jack Michael Storm was there, and Jackie Courtney, and, and Erica Slazak. I mean, with this group of incredible people that, you know, some of them are still there. Uh, and then I w w eventually was killed off. They stretched out that story for three years, <laughs> actually two and a half. And um, at the time they were looking for someone to work as this Bobby Spencer person on General Hospital, and I guess they had tested a few girls. They couldn't find. Was that an existing part, or did you actually originate the part? Did I originated the part. The part. Actually, Douglas Marlin, who was the writer at the time, originated the part. Okay. And they just couldn't find the girl that they wanted but you to play her. But I was the first actress. Yeah. And they called me, and I, they never tested me. Um, I remember Doug Marlin at the time was living in Connecticut, and he came to New York to visit me in my apartment just to talk to me, I thought, for about a half an hour. Um, and he's, you know, about the role. And I guess he gave me the thumbs up because I, I didn't ever have to test. They offered me the part and I was on a plane two days later and they actually gave me my, my, when I first started, they gave me a bungalow in the Beverly Hills Hotel for a month to live in because they knew I had to move yeah. from New York to LA. And they gave me six tickets, four, you know, three back and forth tickets so that I could come for wardrobe fittings and fly home. And then I had to put my apartment you know, pack it all up for the moving man and get the doorman. I was living in New York at the time and come out. And then they gave me one more ticket that I could come back and finalize everything because that was my move. 
there all of a sudden I was living in California. I was on the air four days later. It was very fast. So all these years you've been Bobby Spencer, part of the Spencer family, which is one of the core families of General Hospital. Bobby Spencer, Brock Meyer, Jones, Cassadine, almost Jack Spencer. <laughs> <laughs> do, people, do people see you, after all these years, you, you run into people who they really see you as Bobby Spencer? Sometimes. Because it, with the soap operas, they well, really, know, people take that pretty serious. They do. They take it serious. There's a tremendous allegiance, and I think there's, yeah. there's so many mutual Two particular memories. shows. Yes. They're General Hospital fans. And, Forty and, years, GH yeah. is on the air. So right. you know, you got you've still got people who started, who saw day one, yeah. who will, will come up, you know, or the or the generational. But a lot thing. of loyalty to a particular soap opera. Yes, and to a particular character, yeah. and people who love certain storylines, you know. And I have such a TV family because I've been on so darn long. I have a lot of people that are you know related yeah. to me. So it is there is kind of like a there's substance to it after all these years. Has it been? difficult for you to see yourself as the two different characters or the two totally separate worlds? Do you have to get into that character of Bobby Spencer so much that that uh, you identify with that character? Is that character like you? Oh, I identify with her tremendously. You know, I mean, I feel like I know her like I would know like I'm a older sister or you know what I mean? Like yeah. she's a family member because I've been with through everything she's been through for 25 years and also with my TV, you know, like Tony Geary is my TV brother. He plays Luke. We become very close because you just you're just together so much time out of yeah. you know you go through the life things. Um, but as far as separation, uh, there's definite separation between who I am and who Bobby is. Now, over the years, you've done a lot of other types of things, and and but you're recently doing off Broadway. Yes. Is that a switch? Thank you for asking me about that. Oh, big time switch. I hadn't been in a play. The last play I was in was 15 years ago with Ken Schreiner, who I work with on General Hospital. And we were in a play called, wonderful play, a comedy called Seacliff, California, which was written by Bart Andrews, who wrote all the I Love Lucy stuff. You mm -hmm. may be familiar with Bart. He's wonderful. And we did this. And I remember because I was in that play, I'd been married to my husband for 15 years. And we had no understudies because it was just Ken and me. And Ken bought out the theater so that I could have my wedding night off and not have to go to work. <laughs> I remember that one really well. <laughs> and oh, then, of nice course, <laughs> getting married, of course, obviously, you're married the first couple of years, you don't want to be at a play, you're home, you know, I couldn't wait to get home every night. And then I have my children. So theater, although it's always interested me, wasn't something that I really had time to do because I've always worked so much. You know, I had a day job. Yeah. Uh, and then just recently, I've been off of General Hospital. I took a couple of months hiatus and I, I had some time and it was so exciting. Uh, I did a, a play uh, which we got together you know, with a group. It was all women from daytime and it was, at, it was called Talking With, Jane Martin's play Talking With and it's, it was a compilation of monologues. So it worked for us to do because we didn't actually have to get all the actresses yeah. in the same room at the same time. Everybody could rehearse separately with Howard Fine, wonderful Howard Fine who was our director. He's just Incredible. Good experience. And oh, fabulous experience. Totally and different. I, I got though. to you... play this, this tattooed. Mar mine was called Marks, and this woman who was like with tattoos all over her, and and very different from who I am and who Bobby is, and and I learned, I learned things. You know, I I watched people with tattoos and and <laughs> learned, you know, that people who have tattoos, every every mark, every tattoo is a symbol of a life changing experience or an aha moment or something that you know happened to them that they felt was important enough that they wanted to make a statement about it. I never thought about that before. Yeah, it's interesting. If you don't have tattoos, do you have any tattoos? No. I don't either. You know, no hidden ones. But yeah. what I found is having played this part, a lot of people came up to me and they didn't even have some that were showing, but they'd say, I have one. And they'd want to tell me like, where it was and what it was. And a lot of people have like secret ones. And what it was about. And yeah. what it was about. Because it, it, what it happened. makes some kind of a statement. Their story, yeah. I always knew that my family was very important. I mean, that's my priority is my family, my husband, my children having a life.